Tom Otter lived in the county in the early 1800s. His story begins when he met a young girl called Mary Kirkham. The two became very close and then Mary eventually gave birth to Tom Otter's child. The laws of the day stated that Tom must either marry her or go to jail. Despite the fact that he was already married. On the 3rd of November 1805, Tom took her to be his wife. That night, while they walked home together, Tom killed Mary with a hedge stake. It was not long before the murder was discovered, and Tom Otter was arrested and charged. He was sentenced to death at a trial which took place at the Sun Inn, Saxelby. Mary Kirkham's body was found in the lane and was also taken to the Sun Inn. As the body was brought in, blood spilled onto the steps of the inn. This blood was said to have stained the steps for many years after the murder took place, no matter what attempts were made to clean them. On the 14th of March, 1806, Tom Otter was hanged, and then the body was fastened in irons and hung upon a high post. Even this event was surrounded by tragedy. The body fell from the post twice due to the weight of the irons, and upon falling the second time, crushed one of the men and killed him. The state with which Tom Otter killed Mary was kept for many years. Every year on the night that the murder took place, the state would be removed from wherever it was being kept. Many attempts were made to secure it using iron hoops or staples, but nothing was found that could hold it. The following morning, it would be found in the spot where the murder took place and would be wet with gore. No one knew what or who was moving the stake, and it was eventually burned by the Bishop of Lincoln in the yard outside the cathedral. An article appeared in the Lincolnshire Chronicle a week following publication of the tale. A series of articles entitled Sketches of Country Life by Thomas Miller have recently been commenced in the columns of the Lincoln Times and number two relates to Drizny Nook near Saxelby and the murder of Tom Otter. The article is of such an extraordinary character so full of manifest absurdities and so perverse to the true fact that it has caused more than a fair share of attention. The Saxby people who are well acquainted with the story are <laughs> indignant and condemn in strong terms what they say is a mass of falsehood and superstition. Lincoln people, on the other hand, laugh at the nonsense, fully understanding how the author of the sketch has drawn largely on his imagination for the purposes of exciting the wonderment and pandering to the superstitious ideas of that large class of rural population who yet believe in ghosts, hobgoblins and witches. Ghost hunters still visit the Sun Inn in pursuit of a tale from a Victorian author. Thomas Otter, christened at Treswell on 3rd of March 1782, was the son of Thomas and Anne Nee Temporal. He married Martha Rawlinson in Eckering, Nottinghamshire, sometime during 1804. Their daughter Mary was christened on the 23rd of December 1804 in Ockerton, six miles north of Southwell. During 1805, Otter was working in Lincoln, but under an alias, by using his mother's maiden name of Temporal. Contemporary newspaper articles described Tom as a stout, handsome man, about five feet nine inches high, and described his occupation as a labouring banker upon one of the canals in the neighbourhood of Lincoln. John S. Percy, in his History of Retford, written in 1828, describes Otter as malicious and revengeful and cruel to horses and other animals. Newspaper reports continue he became criminally intimate with a young woman 
and she proved him pregnant, he was compelled by the parish officers to marry her. No one involved was aware that he was already married. The Bastardy Act of 1733 stipulated that the supposed father was responsible for the maintenance of his illegitimate child. If he failed to support the child, the mother could have him arrested on a justice warrant and put him in prison until he agreed to do so. Parishes were obliged to maintain the mother and her child until the father could do so. Those parishes were to be reimbursed by the alleged father, though this rarely happened. In an attempt to stem the rising costs of poor relief, the local authorities attempted to reduce their liability for illegitimate children by forcing the fathers to marry the mothers. This was known as a knobstick wedding, the forerunner of a shotgun wedding. It is far from clear what happened following the wedding, but for some reason Tom and Mary found their way to Drisney Nook, an area on the Nottingham, Nottinghamshire Saxby border along the A57. The body of a woman was found the following morning, her red being beaten to a pulp and a large hedge stake with two bundles of cloths lying near her. Tom Otter was arrested by Patchy White, a Lincoln constable, later in the day at the Pack Horse Inn in Lincoln High Street. He was escorted the following day to Saxelby for the inquest on Mary. Immediately following the inquest, Mary was buried in the churchyard of St. Bertolf, Saxelby by Thomas Rees, vicar of Saxelby. The tale of a man who murdered his pregnant wife on their wedding night on the 3rd of November 1805 still endures. The story has been faithfully reproduced over the years. You can find the same version widely on the internet. And ghost hunters regularly visit the Sun Inn at Saxelby, where the inquest was held. But how much of the story is folk tale? Mm, we've just been through that, haven't we? So how much of it is real and how much of it uh, isn't, I'm not too sure. But the story is definitely endured. So, um, yep. And as you can see that I'm walking, I'm right near the sun in, looking through the windows. And everyone keeps wondering what I'm doing. So, yeah. Um, as you can see, there's kids there as well. And uh, it's packed out in there. So yes, I think that's about it for the story of the Sun Inn and Tom Otter. So hopefully you enjoyed that. <laughs> I've only just begun this. So, um, yeah, I'll be doing more, more, more stories. And uh, we'll just see how it goes. Right, okay, everyone. Uh, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll be back on here again soon. All right, thank you.